Right, hello. Um, so this is an odd one. We're doing this midweek. So um, I'm going to have a chat with Albert tonight. So once he comes on, um, I will have a natter with him tonight. We're just going to talk about everything chocolate. So um, I'm just going to wait for Albert to join once he send me a once he send me a link, um, and then we'll go. But um, how's everybody doing? Yeah, this is a bit odd, isn't it? This is episode 123. So this is chocolate chat. So something we're going to kind of do pe- periodically as we kind of go ahead but I'm just going to do some shout outs to everybody there how are you Linda um this is so sassy joined us um Paula's there um who else have we got There's a few join in Misty Max who else have we got Belfast Belfast Bakehouse how are you I'll send some waves out as well actually um give Albert a minute I know that he is ready Shuka Chocolate in Iran, how are you? Um, Jurat Bakes, Jurat, they were nice. Um, they were nice what you posted today, weren't they? Those, um, that's a very interesting mould. Um, Sean there, right. Alice said, well, Desert Sky, we've got people all over. Howdy, Sean, how are you? We've got people in Canada, we've got people in Iran. Um, nice. <laughs> Somebody sent me a, somebody sent me a, um, nice hair. Why? Is it? It's all right. It's all sticking up. Um, it's people, it's people sending me friend requests. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Where is Albert? Um, he'll be joining us in a minute, I'm sure. Um, Lonely, Lonely's joined us. Hi. Forest of Chocolates. How are you, Stephanie? we go here's Albert um, right uh, Nadia's joined us Albert if you can find that bit that says um, request to join styling chocolates Andrew how are you let me send um, happy days um, Albert, you should have got a. We go accept. It will pop up in a minute. There we go. How are you doing? Hey, Chef. How are you? Let me put on the volume here. Um, I was just going to say to everybody, we I, like I phoned you a little bit earlier, but what I was going to tell the story of last week. Just give me one second. I'm adjust the camera here. I I phoned you last week for like quick five minute call. It's like two hours later. We were still talking. Oh no, his camera stopped. What's happening? It, it's all stopped. There's always this technology, isn't there? When you do a when you do a, a a call on on Instagram, it's absolutely fine. As soon as you do a live, it's just like endless issues. There's lots of people join. Albert, do you want to leave and then come back in again? Are you back? Yeah, Albert, if you leave and then join back in again, it could just be your, could be your Wi-Fi. It could be mine as well, actually. If that makes sense. We have these issues, don't we, with um, Andy Gunderson? How are you, sir? Albert hit the pause button. No, I don't think he did hit the. I don't think he hit the, but the pause button. I think it's just um, Instagram Live is just an absolute nightmare when you have um, people join or not, not join. Give him a moment and he'll be back. I'm sure. Let's see. Right. Let's accept that one. I may well go back in. Give it a moment. It's like a three or four second delay as well with um, with this. Trying to call me, it's not having it at all. I'm gonna have to come out and I'll come back in. I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll, I'll, there we go. So, hours left and he's gonna join back in, I think. Here we go. That might be it. 
Okay. Okay. Back. Are we, are we back? This, are we on? Yeah, we're on. It, uh, you know, <laughs> whenever you do, as I said then, whenever you do kind of face-to-face -face calls on Instagram, you know, with the, the license callback, it's absolutely fine. Um, but whenever you try to do a live, there's just technical problems. I just think to everybody, last, last week, I gave you a call last week just to kind of set this up, and we ended up talking for nearly two hours, so... <laughs> yeah, so I don't well. think we talk, don't think. <laughs> Anyway, Albert, welcome. Um, I think most people know you. Okay, or they've seen you. Um, you've, been, you've been very, very busy because I think, let me just do a quick rundown because you can fill in the details here. But like, so last year, entered a baker's competition as a chocolatier and won it. But, so last year, entered, entered a baker's TV competition as a chocolatier and won it. Yeah. Got yes. engaged and then moved from a small kind of apartment set up to now into a fully blown kitchen in Long Beach, right? So has it paused again? It has paused again, has not it? I don't think it's my connection. Bear with us. Um, no idea what's going on here. <coughs> yeah, we can see you, Albert, but you've completely frozen. I don't know if, I don't know if there's a pause. I don't think there is a pause. Um, mine's are working fine. Let's do this again. I keep getting your your request to join keeps coming up, so. Video went away. It's back. Promise. All right. Let me accept that one. Albert, you might have to. You might have to leave and come back in again. Right. You're back. Oh God. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> What's going on? It's all right. It happens. It's not like TV. So, a busy year, right? Yes. A very busy year. And so I was just saying, you did the, the Baker's competition as a chocolatier and won that. Um, didn't think you were going to win that, but you won that as a chocolatier, right? I did. I did. Um, got engaged and then moved from a, your, I bet you were in your own apartment, weren't you, working? Yeah. And Here was... in LA and California, there's like a, we have a certification called CFO yeah. or Cottage Food Operator, yeah. which allows you to be able to bake from home legally. As long as your food is not highly perishable, like steaks and cheese and, you know, things like that, ice cream, you yeah. know. So if you're making candy bars and bonbons and your AW is fairly low yeah. enough, the, the health department allows you to make chocolates and, you know, from home. Yeah. And so I, I had a loft, a Liverpool loft in downtown L.A. It's actually a unique story how I found that because uh, after the show on Baker's Dozen, uh, I was able to, um, uh, you know, save some funds and behind this camera is my sell me. And so since a sell me is a, an industrial equipment, it cannot be in a home, obviously. Right. Oh, right. And so I needed a place where it could be, um, has a power outlet to do so, yeah. but I couldn't afford a commercial space. So this building was a commercial building that transformed into a home and my permit allowed me to be there for live work loft. So oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so we had a chat the other week. It started with cake pops, didn't it? You wanna because you I mean you're 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 you you know, you're on the rise, you're into a new premises, you're gonna launch very soon, so we'll have a talk about that. Um you were telling me the fascinating story because you were you were in the fitness industry. Yes. And it and it was and it was cake pops. And I don't know if everybody knows this story. I'm not gonna give too much away, right? Yeah. But how did it? So, as a chocolatier, when did it start, and how did it start? Because I think people will be interested in that. So many of the people viewing are at home yes. producing. You know as well, as well as I go, I know a, a lot can change in the space of a month. Yes, like you can go from uh, to suddenly you're like, oh my god, this is too much. So, right. how did that happen? When did that happen, and how did that happen? Because you've got to get the story of the cake pops in there. Yeah. So, uh 
Um, um, it's a very long story, but I'll make it short. So I was a personal trainer for Equinox for about, uh, I was a trainer for about 14 years. You know, my passion was fitness and health. And, but I've always wanted to, you know, be an artist and candy making was one of them. And my mom and my dad kind of ingrained or programmed me not to be a starving artist. So get away from that. Yeah. And so uh, it was Easter 10 years ago and I saw cake pops. And so cake pops here in the States are like in a, on a stick yeah. and it's like a cake and icing mixed up together like a dough. And then you put it as a ball or a shape you dip it in chocolate, yeah. usually compound chocolate, and then here's your cake pop, right? Yeah, they were huge and popular, yeah. You know, and so I did that um, as on my first try, and my first clients was uh, Michael Strahan, Bruce Springsteen, and Lady Antebellum during the Grammys within the first six months of trying it out. Wow. You know, and so my boss said, okay, Albert, you should do this full time. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not making much. this again, you know, but things happened and I've always been wanting to do chocolatering, but it's just something I never told people. I had been deathly intimidated of tempering because I don't know the technicalities of tempering. Yeah. And so I did cake pop making for about eight years. And then about uh, that's a, 2000. Lot, that's a lot of cake pops. Yes, it is. <laughs> wow. I made designs for Disney for the opening of Frozen. Uh, I did designs for them for Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. Ratatouille, and other. Uh, I, I make their characters, and the legal team, Marvel and Disney, would approve it, and I would make it by the hundreds or thousands by hand. It was it's crazy. Yeah. You know. And so then 2019, um, before COVID, I've always wanted to become a chocolatier and I saw Melissa Capel. And yeah. one of my mentors said, Albert, for your birthday, I am, hey, how are you doing? Um, I am uh, gonna enroll you to Melissa Capel's class. Yeah. And I was intimidated because I never, I was the only one who did not know how to temper. So no idea tempering, I've never seen a sell me, scrapers, molds, nothing. And that was just for three days. And thousands and thousands of pounds worth of equipment everywhere, right? Yes. And it was in Vegas. And I was intimidated. But then after I saw him, Chris Harvey and I met online and we became friends. And he said, Albert, and then COVID yeah. hit. And then he said, Albert, I don't have, I need some support with training. I want you to train me. You see, be a trainer, right? Yeah. I'll show you how to make candy and chocolate. So I'm like, deal. <laughs> so he, we met like maybe five times and I picked it up really well. He has a really excellent way of simplifying things. Yeah. Into I was going to say, you know, with the tempering, you know what you said there with the tempering? You know, I, I do lots of teaching. I've been in industry a long, long time. Um, what I found with the tempering is that, that chefs make it really complicated and, and it's not. Um, no. We talk about this on Chalky Chat, that when you, once you understand what a beta crystal is and what it does and how it makes chocolate shrink, now you can understand retraction. And if you understand temperatures and you can measure temperature, you know, like Chris is a perfect example. He teaches real simple, solid, right? And it works it's an excellent because it's not complicated. Teacher. Yeah, exactly. and the more complicated it is, the less I find it works. He explained it to me once. I'm like, oh, so that's yeah, it. Yeah, Not, that, nothing that, against that Melissa. Right. Well, Melissa's very detailed. But then I saw also I stuck with the numbers and it yeah. made sense. And so within a short period of time, I started to gain momentum. And um, in about a year, uh, a year after, I was able to afford, you know, um, multiple molds. I have a um, by Didi, one of those guitar yeah. cutters. Yeah. You know, I was able to buy um, uh, a large so you to invest, right? Of course. Yeah. Everything that I earned went to the business. And I also worked part time for Apple, too, okay. which most people don't know. Um, so every day that you see me working, I'm here. On weekends, I'm kind of kind of silent because I'm yeah. at my other job. <laughs> well, this is the, you know, it's tipping the scale for, for all the small producers. Some, somebody asked a question on the show the other night and said, you know, what do you pay yourself um, at, when you, you know, as a start off? And it's, well, it's one of two things. 
you either invest into the equipment so you can get better at it and do more to sell more. And it's tipping the scales from having another job to maybe going four days a week, big job, two days a week, my own business, and then and tipping that until eventually you go, you know, like you have, you're into a full commercial property and you've got to ramp the volume up and you've got to, it's got to start um, paying its way and paying you as well, I would have thought. So, but it can be done. And it can be done. It is very it. challenging. What I always tell people who work from home, because I was, you know, just working from home literally just four months ago. You know, um, when I go to work, I have to mentally and physically prepare myself. Whatever my nine hour shift is, to me in my head, yeah. that's warm up, right? Yes. And so I, I, I'll give him 100%, but then I will pace my energy inside. And once I'm here, I'm on, well, you know, and I'll, I usually, I'm here, oh, when I was working at home, I will work five days, six days a week. Uh, I will put in 80 hours of work. Exactly. And business owner. Yeah. yeah. Said, <laughs> exactly. said to me, like, what hours do you do? I'm like, I have fucking no idea. What. I don't count my hours because that's an employee frame of mind. I'm not yeah. an employer. I'm a business owner. So cool. every moment that I do in my business for me, it's for me. I'm not and making you have, have to operate. enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, totally. If you don't enjoy it, then it's yeah. miserable, of course. But luckily, totally. so, I love I've it. always said to people, you know, if, you, if you're working full time somewhere and you've got the side hustle, you should be skipping home from work ready to just go and because it's, it's, your, it's your business. It's don't, you don't count your hours. And if you do pay yourself, it's either you buy a new piece of shiny equipment like sell me, right? Correct. And then when it arrives, you're like, I don't know if I should have done that. Or you pay yourself, in which case you probably go and buy molds and stuff anyway, Correct. right? Because that's the is that you're a business owner, not an employee. And I think that, and you know, like you said there, you go to Apple and you kind of like, it's timed, it's a nine hour day. Can't wait for it to finish to go and do my thing. Correct. Right. And I'm very fortunate because uh, in Apple, they, they know that I run this business full time, you know. So before work, I'm doing chocolates. Yeah. After work, I'm doing chocolates. Uh, I'm very blessed and fortunate that my partner, uh, or fiance, should I say, um, he's very patient and he's not clingy. So he's like, okay, Albert, do your chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do my thing all perfect, you know. And so... Um, during uh, what made me actually jump for this was this. So um, I was working from home and I'm comfortable. Life is great. You know, I have clients, you know, I'm busy with holidays, everything's good. Uh, but in downtown LA, it is intense. Cause so for those people that are viewers or watching this, if you guys Google downtown LA and Google Cecil Hotel, I live next door to that, which is two blocks away from Skid Row, which is like a very, the heart of LA and it's intense. You see some crazy crap. That's, 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 that's an awkward work, walk to work, isn't it? Just... No, I mean, it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And so um, where we live, it's a, it's a 100, uh, 1100 square foot loft, 75% of it is work. The 25% is where we live. It's great for me, but it's not fair for my partner. Yeah. So Disney hits me up and says, hey, we want you to do um, Oogie Boogie bash in downtown Disney. I'm like, oh my gosh. And so um, at the time I am um, working from home, I can't do it. And so I have to be in a commercial space. After I get, since I'm certified here at the kitchen, there's another certification I need to attain. And then I could be able to get my products at the theme park level, which is what they want. And so, you know, I was shopping around, you know, one of my vendors, he basically supplies kitchen for, you know, business owners like us, right? Home base. So if you want to rent a room for an hour or two, you're paying $35 an hour or something like that. So I go and I'm going to give you a bit of a tour of the place. I show yeah, the viewers that, the kitchen. I, people would like to see actually, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> then um, end up happening is I enter this place. I'm going to kind of, this is the exciting part. So then you fully you moved in now. Are you, are you fully set? Yeah. So this is a hallway from the elevator going in here, right? So when I check out this place, it's pretty amazing, you know? There's like a washroom here. Uh, you can do massive dishes uh, there in the corner. Oh, wow. And if I want to bake or do cakes, there's another room over there. So you go down the aisle here. It's actually kind of neat. 
And then when you enter my room, it's kind of funny. I'm the only one here in this floor. This is my spot. It's all to yourself, right? Oh shit, it's big. God, that's looking sexy. Your videos make that look like a smaller space. That's quite a bit of a big space, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's big. It's, it's actually like, um, it's 470 square feet. And so what I love about, for those people, viewers that are working from home, here's my suggestion. Um, I had a friend who went from having a passion, having a dream, and went straight into commercial. So one day he goes to Apple and uh, he was buying a phone. I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? We're talking. And he was sharing with me how stressed he was because there was so much, you know, when you go to commercial, there's a lot of legalities and bureaucracy and just that you're not used to and you're not you generating you're just starting income something. volume as well, right? You need the, the, you need the income volume as well. Yeah. The bills and then he, said, he told me, Albert, if I could do it all over again, and you have to ask me this question before, he's like, Albert, I would... I would have done what you did, working from home, save as much money as you can, invest as you can with your own business, and then when you transfer over to a commercial, you have it all. Yeah. So yeah. what I did was, I this was at my studio. Those racks and those wine fridge were all at my studio. <laughs> all these like bowls and everything you see was at my studio. So when I moved in here, right, all I had to do was my big compartment sink, my toolbox, the commercial refrigerator, all of this was at my studio. Um, and then, this is my favorite, my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the so pain now, is temporary. Yeah, and then now I, I, I'm just so blessed. When I came over here, I, I saw the room and I saw the potential. I'm like, how much is rent? What? So I did the math. It was doable and they gave me a really good deal for the next two years. Um, after that one, things will go up a little bit, but with my momentum and you all see how, how much I work and how so hard was, I do. Was the, the contract from, so the potential contract from Disney is what instigated the move into a commercial premises. Is that, they, they wanted a commercial enterprise license, Correct. right? And so that's what helped me, it forced me to go here, but it was not an easy task because then um, for those people who follow me, I'll do posts of my old apartment or live work loft. We had to downsize and imagine an 1100 square foot loft and a quarter of it is going to storage. A quarter of it, we had to move our home and belongings and the rest is here. So all of it under one time, I was, it was an emotional time. I, uh, and then, you know, it's like building a house. Oh, we'll be ready in six months. Yeah. No. <laughs> so what, so what, what are the, you know, going, what, what are the lessons for you then? Like, I mean, if you were going to talk to, there's lots of chocolatiers, amateur home producers who are, are established, they're doing well, their volumes are growing. What have been the lessons for you then really in terms of taking that step? Lessons if you're working from home um like if you were gonna if you were gonna start again what would you do differently wow okay um okay uh slow down speed up i think one of the th things that i did before i just wanted to make it because i wanted i wanted to right yeah. but you have you can have an amazing product but if no one sees it um uh or see the process behind it, is this another thing, right? If you see a bonbon, a bonbon's a bonbon, right? So whether you see, you know, um, you know, if you if you don't if you take out the brand, right, and you see a piece of my chocolate, a normal one, not enrobed, a C's, a Godiva, they all kind of look the same. Yeah. So one of the things I did, an error that I did was I just kept on doing posts and not understanding the algorithms, the because now you know how when you're marketing things change. Yeah. You know, the time that I, I got more viewers and how Disney found me is when I started doing videos and reels. Yeah. And so going back to that. With, with you with you in the reels or just the product? Uh, me with the reels. I noticed that, um, again, too, maybe because I, I like, um, to me, like I, when I was young, I was very, I'm an introvert, but my mom and my dad, mostly my mom taught me how to do public speaking. Yeah. 
because she said, Albert, we're going to America one of these days, and you need to learn how to talk and public speak and be comfortable in public. So I'm going to teach you. I'm like, no. And so now I got comfortable talking on camera. And so I noticed that when you are part of the product, you're part of it. There's a, an emotional connection to your product. And it didn't do that as much in the beginning. It was mostly like product based, product based. You think so it's like it's over. We call it engagement. And we, we live, unfortunately, now, you know, and I think since COVID, we live in a three second universe. People just scroll, right? And, and to have a real, something's got to capture them in the first three seconds. And people like seeing you, they want to see the person that's making it, not what they're making, right? right? Um, because they engage and when they engage, you, you know, the other thing is this loyalty, right? You get this brand loyalty because they've seen the person, they trust the person, they like the person, they'll buy from the person. Um, it, it's a, it's, it's a strong, it's a strong thing that once you recognize that, like, and if you're not comfortable, you don't have to speak on camera. It just needs to be yeah. you doing stuff. Just do this, just put the camera on the side and for me, I, when people watch my post, if you look at it carefully, sometimes I stagger. I have a hard time talking and focusing on my temperature at the same time. Yeah. So I'll kind of like, ah, Man, I'll we pause. Can't um, multitask. That's, that's just one of those things, right? Just for me, I just like to just do my thing. And then I don't even want to talk when I'm on, yeah. when I'm doing um, temperatures and stuff. Um, another thing that I would definitely um, do differently in the beginning, know your numbers, you know, um, in America, it's all about cups and teaspoons, but obviously I transitioned to grams. <laughs> Metric easier, system. So much easier. So oh much God. easier. Gra milk <laughs> milk and like grams that. are the same thing. Like if it says, a like if a recipe says 100 milliliters, it's the same as a, 100 grams. Right? <laughs> That's done, you know. So, and I was, oh my gosh, yes, metric system, way better. Um, uh, man, what else? There's so much. Right, I, you, I mean, how much do you spend? It is a question then. Producing is one thing. Um, the same because you said, you know, it's okay making a product, but it's telling people that it's out there because half the job is business, yes. Half, yes. half the job is um, sales, marketing, numbers, accounts, purchasing, um, yeah, looking after equipment, contracts, looking at the legal side, looking at the um regulator side all those kind of negotiating with customers dealing with contracts disney for example of you can't go into that meeting i'm sure and go oh well i'm not really sure okay. <laughs> no it's just you know end of contract isn't it so has, has there been a big learning curve for that or is that something you brought from another industry in terms of understanding oh, i learned as i went uh in all honesty um when um one thing i could teach the viewers. So I, this is what I do. Let's say, for example, they're asking specific questions because sometimes I don't, I'll prepare, I'll prepare a basic number format, but sometimes there's some, they're going to ask um, something I might not be comfortable answering right away. So I don't want to undershoot myself or overprice something. Yeah. I always say, Hey, you know what? These are the base price. Look it up in the, in my presentation portfolio, anything outside of that, give me a couple of days and I can give you, you know, further numbers. Right. I am not afraid to show um, that I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I think by doing that, it takes, you take ownership and breeds confidence of like, Trust. okay, he's not going to lie to me, Trust. right? He's telling me. Yeah. And I always say when I work with people, I want to be a win-win situation. No matter what, I'm team Disney or team whatever, but it has to benefit me as much okay. as it has to benefit you. Yeah. And when they see that and they hear that, Okay. So not afraid, not afraid to walk away from it if it's like just not a good deal. Oh yeah, oh. don't be afraid to ask. Um, that, when I first started the business, I didn't even know what a POS was or an invoice. I remember one day I was I was um, staying at my friend's um, storage room that he converted into a bedroom where I stayed in. Yeah. I could have easily just found a job. I could be sell, doing sales and making good money. But my goal was to have a passion and grow this business and be a, a something entrepreneur. My family didn't believe me at the time. I had a lot of naysayers. And I remember going home to my room slash storage and I was crying. I was like, oh, like, what are you doing with your life? Like you could, you're in your thirties. You could be making good money in sales. Like, 
what are you doing? And a part of me, I, I saw this invoice. What the hell is an invoice? And then I'm talking to my friend about it. And she works on a corporate entity and she taught me invoicing. She taught me apps of how to, you know, so now I do it like with my eyes closed. But then my drive and my fire that I had to seek deep inside me was like, how bad do I want change? And how bad do I want not solely prove my family wrong, but so that my mom and dad doesn't have to worry it's about me as a young, so as an adult. Yeah. And I worked my ass off. And to the point that I was almost, almost homeless at one point, uh, nowhere to live, nowhere to go. Um, but my friend offered this place for me, worked my ass off. And 10 years later, everything here is here and almost all paid off. Yeah. And no investment and just working, working, working. That's a lovely, that's a lovely pl place to be in with. Because even for our business, we call it boot, a bootstrapped business um, in that we've got no investors. We don't owe anybody anything. We've grown everything. We've reinvested everything. We've gone through the hardships of making it work. And do I buy a bag of chocolate or do I get the liquid glucose, you know? And, it, and, it's, and you make it, but it's the, the determination to make it happen. And I think it also comes down to this kind of working, um, trying to think of the word, like it needs doing, it's going to get done. And it doesn't matter to me if it's midnight or one in the morning, it's getting done. No matter and, what. Um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, absolutely, it's getting done. And, and, and as a business owner, you know, when sometimes it says to me, you know, what hours do you work? I'm like, you, you've got me confused with an employee because I'm not, I'm an, I'm an owner and I'll do everything I need to do to make it work and i love that i i i love how you know I, we were talking a while ago so i i've got more on my plate right now than i can probably deal with but i do love it it's just hardest job i've ever had is not enough to do for me the hardest i feel at, at times is not enough time in a day so this morning i had so much in my mind i was i've been up since 3 45 this morning and so i I did my morning prayer, then I hit the gym. <laughs> and then after that one, go home, be a, be a house husband for a little bit and kind of like, you know, get things ready, laundry, blah, 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 blah. And then once the kitchen open, I'm here in production already. Because um, I'm going to be some of the, spoiler alert, you know, for the viewers, um, Albert's Petite Suites will be featured at the Los Angeles Natural History Museum this year in oh, June. Wow. Uh, they're opening a chocolate um, exhibit and they picked 10 chocolatiers. They were in a show that I performed in and they were just blown away of my story and my passion. Wonderful. And now I'm going to be part of that and my products are going to be sold at the museum. And it's connections, isn't it? It's just going to grow and grow and grow. Yes. So it might, might be that you out, you know, you outgrow the space that you're in. And I think you've probably thought about that, that already. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure sure you have because I think as a as a entrepreneur and as a business person it's not about a dream it's about how do I expand and where do I expand yes. to and somebody asked a question there are you gonna so you're gonna produce as well as the Disney you've got your own stuff because your store opens shortly doesn't it what's the date you open? yeah so on February 10 I'm having a grand opening here in Long Beach it's open now but I again it's kind of crazy the way that my my business model is designed. I am more powerful with corporate clients. Yep. So I do designs for David German, Joe Malone, Ritz Carlton, Disney sometimes. And so for me, and everyone has their own business model. Yep. Um, uh, I like corporate clients because then with one order, they'll order a thousand, yeah. one contact, one due date, done. Yeah. Right? And of course, so when you're dealing with the public, it's 400 orders of 10, right? Yeah. So then you're talking to 400 people. It's challenging for me, uh, but I do it because I want people to, to be able to appreciate the Alvis Petite Sweets and to have an affordable luxury chocolate. Can they come, you know, it's not can, just, they, can they come and collect from you then? Yeah, so they can come over to the kitchen. They can order online and they pick it up from me. And right now, that's why you see my post. I'm doing it nonstop because within a week, the shelf is going to be stacked with all my products. Mm -hmm. So then people just kind of grab and go, which is amazing because now with Partic Collective, it's acting as my storefront. 
So it's like, it's working for me when I'm asleep. You know what I mean? People can just go in and go online, albusbtc.com or partakecollective.com. They go to the kiosk, they order, pick it up and go. Yep. And, you know, this is an ongoing thing. Uh, so far from a grand opening, I have about close to 100 people coming. And I'm, I'm nervous about that because I've you, never just, experienced that are you before. Ready, are you ready for the volume? <laughs> it's going to happen you no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday, yesterday you made how many? Um, yesterday, in uh, two days, I made a thousand bonbons right. on my own. Because that that could just the reality is that that could just be an everyday thing, right? Now and now it means employees, right? And but I think you you thought about all that and you 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 kind of know the answers. Is what what triggers the I need an employee, need, need another employee, and it's it's just understanding that I think that in business, isn't it? Lots of people think that they'll produce chocolates. They'll do online sales and it'll come, pilot. It, it doesn't yeah. work like that. It's oh. little bits. And you get, one con you get one corporate order, which is less value than your kind of premium online sales. The nice thing about the corporate orders is they're constantly ticking, right? Correct. And now, you know, people at the beginning, they're a corporate order and they're happy. I think what you've done is you've got the corporate orders and then if somebody comes and gets the occasional box, that's the bonus, isn't it? That's right. the, I don't know why this fireworks going off behind me. <laughs> Cause you're, you're fabulous. I, have no idea. <laughs> I love it. I have no idea what that, I didn't touch anything. So my girls, I told you we did, where is it? Oh, I sent you a picture. So we launched two new colors yesterday. I've got to tell you this. Wow. Right? We did the, the fuchsia. Okay. And we were labeling it all up and my, we've already had problems with this because Seren, my youngest one, who's six and people watch Shocky Chat, they, they will know Seren. She's quite, she'll be on stage at some point. She doesn't lack confidence. She, Fuchsia is spelled F-U-C-H-S-I-A. So she looks at me and says, Dad, why did you call it Fuxia? <laughs> so the girls are walking around saying, oh, I like this new Fuxia color. Anyway, oh, sorry, I had to tell you that one. Um, so, Disney orders opening on the tenth. Um, what else is going on then? Tell us about the tell us about the the chocolate, the the Bake Off show. Because oh, I yes, think it's so fascinating that you had those. I'll let you tell it, but you know the negotiation at the beginning where you said, "I'm not a baker, I'm a chocolatier." Yeah, and, so that's and, exactly. and you fucking won it. <laughs> It's actually a unique story because like it was um it was like in COVID right towards the end of COVID, and uh, or in the middle I, I I don't even remember but um Hulu hits me up and says hey I, I thought at first it was a joke it was like a spam or this is like what is this and hey we're having a show called Baker's Dozen and um we are looking for bakers to compete and we have been watching your reels and your videos on Instagram and uh, we want you to compete and the first thing I said was no. I'm not competing. I don't want to be in a TV show. I, I'm done making cake pops. I want to focus on bonbons and chocolates. So I turned them down, you know? So they called me two more times. So the third time they said, look, we like your story. You're living the American dream. You come here to America, you're an immigrant. You started something from the ground up. And in a short period of time, these are your clientele. I think the world needs to see this. I'm more like, okay, if I can make candy and chocolates, I'll compete, you know? And he said, you might not win. I'm like, I don't care about not winning. I just want to have a good time, you know? He's all like, okay. So it was just like this, a little proctor. So then uh, there was one thing that hit him hard. He asked me this question. He said, okay, Albert, I want you to say to the viewers, I'm recording you right now. Hi, my name is Albert Daniel. I'm a master chef from LA, California. And then so I said that, I'm like, hi, my name is Chef Albert. I'm a master chef from, Albert, um, from LA, California. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't say that. And he's like, what do you mean? Because I'm not a master. I've only been doing this for, for two years. I'm, there's so much there to learn. I'm not a master. I'm just, want to give it my all. And he's like, wow, there's teeth on this, uh, this answer. I want to hear more. So why did you really do it? And I vented and I talked about my haters at the time, my siblings and wasn't so supportive. And he said, Albert, now this is what the viewers need to see because it's real. Honestly. It's not rehearsed, it's not fake, it is real. And so I did it 
and then we'll let you know if you get chosen. So a month later, it's like, Albert, showtime, you got chosen. I'm like, uh, these are the rules. Um, <laughs> it's going to be oh, shit. Five, five o'clock in the morning and you will be baking outside. I'm all like British Bake Off. Like, yeah, it's a spinoff of British Bake Off. So I don't know how you're going to temper because you don't know your temp. I'm all like, I don't know the humidity. I don't know where I'm at I, outside. So my technical level was really, really high. Um, and it was 12 bake, 13 bakers. The first round was making cake pops, which I know how to do well. Yeah. Bit of experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I passed round one. Uh, round two, you have to make something that you're known for. So, so for me, I made uh, guava patafui yeah. and some uh, chocolate, uh, dark chocolate bonbons that look like the solar system. Yeah. And so everything was from scratch, you know, I was, I was tempering by hand. My boyfriend actually taught me how to temper without using a table. So I'll, I'll do a class on that one. He said, Albert, sweetie, you have to learn how to talk when the camera's moving around. You just tend to just do your work and not talk. You just have, you have to talk. I'm like, okay. So then we were rehearsing things. Albert, you might have a table that's not metal. You might have a table that's wooden. So how are you going to temper if you don't have a tempering machine? How are you going to do it? I'm all like, this stuff kept you awake at night, didn't it? Because he, he's like, you know, he's like a, a technical guy. He's a, te you know, um, a computer guy. He's like, Albert, I have a plan for you. I'm like, how is this guy going to learn how to show me how to temper? He's not even a chocolatier. So this is what he did. He said, Albert, I need you to bowl. I need you to melt 400 grams of chocolate in a bowl. I'm like, end so then now you put half of that in a gigantic piping bag i'm like okay and then you get ice um you know ice packs and roll it around and cool it down yeah. i'm all like okay and after that i'll pour it back in a bowl really beat Chris. yeah and so i did it i tempered 400 grams of chocolate in 15 minutes so it was quick so now i was able to make the bonbons like cameras all around me and everything. And my goal was to be done five minutes before every round. Well, everyone's going crazy. Oh my God, you have one more minute. Five minutes, I'm done. There was a part where they said, hey, Chef Albert, you have five more minutes. Don't you want to do anything else? I'm like, oh no, I'm not stressing out. I'm good. <laughs> Cleaning. And then I make it to championships. I make it to the finals. Um, and that we had to do um, some, it's called a mashup. You have to combine two kinds of the desserts into one, either as a, like a, what's it called? A cronut, like a donut. Yeah, yeah we know. Uh, that. You know. Or in concept. So my concept was uh, a, a birthday cake bash. You have a cake but you bash it open, there's chocolates and candy inside. Right. Right. So because I was winning towards the end, I had like a mentor, a, a guest speaker that comes into the show and you can ask them a question, but I didn't need him. I didn't need his assistant. I was perfectly <laughs> fine, you know? And so before the show, they tell you all the ingredients that I need. I need, I need Boiron puree. Yeah. I need Calavo chocolate. I need, it's all your favorite stuff. Yeah. Oh my, yeah. I'm, not, I, I'm not deviating. I have to be this because then anything outside of that, I don't know the chemical component or the sugar structure or whatever of a, you know, of another, you know, puree. They told me to have everything, okay? So then in the last, like, you know, minutes of the show, it's Albert, Chef Albert. I'm like, so the camera's moving, I'm like, what's going on? We're missing one of the ingredients. I'm all, which one? He's so like, your truffle shells. I'm all, Oh my God. So I kind of freaked out. I'm okay. So then I raised my hand, forcing the guy to come out. And then he's like, hey, I would recommend taking that out, giving me some tips and pointers. I'm okay. I'm going to admit that I got to go and make this. And so I did. And then towards the end, um, it was a two day shoot. You have to be there at five o'clock in the morning. And then they announced that grand you know, the winner is Albert. And because I am working from home, they did not mention my business. I'm the underdog. Oh, so I'm just Albert Daniel, not Albert's Petite Sweets. And they had me compete against other professionals who had their own storefront, who had their own staff. They went to school. And I'm like, 
you have to classes online. That's I, still fair, isn't it? Yeah, which is fine, you know, because then I loved it because in a way, the followers that I got after were all authentic and real. It wasn't because um, it was forced. So people seek me out. I was like, who's this Albert guy? And then from there, it started to escalate. Like, Ritz Carlton found me, Joe Malone found me, David German, and so forth. And then after that, I'm um, like, hey, COVID hit even hard. I'm walking, I qualified to get this loan. I was able to afford to sell me. And I told my sweetie, hey, sweetie, I, I cannot have a sell me be at the house. There's just no way. And so then that forced us to move into LA, knowing the fact that it's temporary. Yeah. And then now same feeling to where I'm here. I feel this is a stepping stone before maybe in a few years, I'm going to have my own yeah. spot. But I'll know in time. I think, I think, I think with business, you know, I think with business, you're always trying to expand. And it's whether you have one unit or two shop fronts or three shops. But everybody, I think all great businesses started at home, right? think all great and it and it was those lessons at home and the lessons were what went wrong how did I fix it um it's all those you know from from working with accounts and and, and working with marketing and doing sales or making reels or doing all those they're all positive learning experiences whether they were right or wrong correct. I still think you learn more from what went wrong than what went right correct because it's painful but, yeah because when <laughs> it goes right you just grows over it don't you when it yeah. goes wrong you're forced human psyche to, to dwell on it for weeks or late at night until you've resolved it and if you've got that i suppose entrepreneurial spirit and the the work ethic you will find the solution and two things happen in business don't they you will either put all the effort in until it works or you'll give up right that that that's you know and it's it's a very inspiring story that you've got. There's a few people that have written that there, actually. It's a very inspiring story that you can literally go from, you know, sleeping on a couch to getting the links, being honest, being yourself, um, the connections. You know, Disney didn't just wander up and ask you. It was a, an, an, a, lots of different events, but you've got to put yourself out there, haven't you? And it's, it is crazy because now, like, I, I am excited to what's yet to come, what's, what's the next stage, because now I feel that with this commercial setting, I, I love it. I, I, I love it to where like, it, it's opening so much more doors because now I think people are taking me a little bit more seriously because I'm not from home. Not to say nothing wrong with you, you kind home. Of, you're pinching yourself a little bit. You know, but, but there's a definitely, um, it opens a lot more doors. Yeah. Now with this setting, I'm able to do things for theme parks. When this type of setting, I can do it with certain department stores, you know? And I know I already have the quality to back it up. Uh, now it's a matter of the next step, like you said. Like you said, now what's employees? And then what is that gonna look like? I need to be a good leader and fair. Um, how's that gonna look like in regards of pay scale and whatever, expectations? I um, understand your vision. So leadership, right? They've got to understand your vision. And I've worked some great chefs. I know we had a conversation about this. At three missions, you know, everybody knows Gordon Ramsay. I work for the guy that taught Gordon Ramsay, right? And whilst I learned some amazing cooking, what I did learn is a philosophy and that the story behind each dish was just as important as the ingredients that went on. Why is this dish formulated this way? And he made us look at costings, but it was all when you looked at all the chefs that were in this kitchen, they all had the same aspirations as him and they had the same ethos and the same values. And the people that exited very quickly didn't have those values. Um, and it's a, it's a leadership, you know, for you as you get employees, it's a leadership. I mean, Chris Harvey talked about this, uh, you know, with his team that I don't need you to be super duper amazing at everything. I just need you to be able to do what I ask you to do it when I ask you to do it um, and enjoy it and get on with the rest of the team Correct. Right, and deliver. Um, as the capacity to learn, it's all learnable, isn't it? Everything's, you know, everything's learnable. Cake pops is learnable. Right? <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, in chocolates, that's, I mean, I, I, again, it's crazy how four years ago, I knew nothing about this. 
And I remember when I took Melissa's class, um, I was discouraged. I talked to her on the side and then he said, oh, what's going on with you? Are you all right? I'm all like, I'm kind of sad right now, Melissa. And she's like, why are you sad? I'm like, your mold costs 25 to $50. Your spatula costs 20. Your chef rubber bottle costs 20 bucks. Yep. Your compressor costs a thousand. I mean, like, I, I, I need like 10 grand to start. And she's like, Albert, that might not even be enough. I'm more like, um, okay. But it's not true though, is it? No. It, it's, I, I, was, I, was, I was angry, I was upset, but then I went back to my, to my, you know, I told myself, Albert, you did more with less. Yes. Remember, Albert, you were once homeless at the time and you still got shit done. So how is this any different from anything else that you've done? So of all things, Albert, you have fire in you, so you use it. So fine, you don't get a can afford, you know, 10 moles right now. Start one. Fine, you cannot get this specific spatula or whatever. Just start yeah. with one. So for every birthday, every holiday, family like, what do you need, Albert? Money towards my business. Yeah. A spatula. I need mold <laughs> C1477, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know, you know. I know. I know people that started with, I'll show you. I know people that two years, three years ago, when I was doing, that was their starting equipment, right? And a mold. And they are produced, they, they've, they got sell me's, they've absolutely, but they've continued to invest. They've been, they've continued to invest in equipment and themselves. Yes. So they've done courses, they've sought out kind of experts to help them. Uh, or found mentors that will kind of support them with questions. Um, it doesn't, I don't think it always needs thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment. It just needs the right determination and know how. And then you, you've got, you know, all the other stuff. To, you can have a kitchen with a hundred thousand pounds worth of equipment in. Still got to do accounts, still got to do employees. You still got to negotiate contracts, still got to talk to the public and deal with, with online payments and banks and sales and market is it's endless. Like the chocolate production bit, it's half of our job, yeah. isn't it? Yes. The other half is fucking worrying at midnight, like, oh, did I put the fridge on? Did I? This is why I was up <laughs> this morning at 3.30. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh no, I did the other day, it's like, oh no, do you know what? I've painted the wrong molds. I've got, I've, I've got contract stuff that I do. And I've got two distinct molds, right? One's a straight-sided dome, one's a, and they have the normal dome. And then I got all these molds painted like sixty of them. It's like God painted the wrong mold. <laughs> and I, you know, I did, I did I'm, that with my, I'm with my waiting models. for them to start work, and it's like um, eight twenty-nine, eight thirty. Is it going to be a major problem if the mold's slightly different? No, no, no. It's fine, James. Oh, okay, thank God. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> That's busy. It's just business. Business. Lots of lots of tiny little problems that need solving, all day long, all the time. Whether you're spraying, whether you're tempering cocoa butter, whether you're shelling, whether you're doing fillings, whether you're, you know, pat de fruit is set enough because you didn't get the acidity right. It's just a color. But I think starting at home and rehearsal, every time you make something you're practicing, eventually makes you into a great tactician and a great producer that's able to just go, well, I can, you know, I can do this, this, this. that's experience, isn't it? And that, Correct. That's a bit you're enjoying. It's great, it's great. It's crazy, actually. There's this one, um, I think I saw on Instagram, where they said that uh, what differentiates a professional from a novice, you know, or a hobbyist. A hobbyist will do it and continue to do it until they get it right, right? And a professional, they'll do it and do it and do it until they can't get it wrong, you know? Okay. So then it's, it's consistent, right? Yeah. This is why like after, after I took Melissa's class, I did not even temper for about three, four months after that. And then uh, my partner said, Albert, you took this class, this expensive class. And yeah, I'm like, I just don't understand yeah. the logic. And then when Chris <laughs> came in to the picture, he made it easy. And after that, I worked on it every single day. Um, at least four or five hours every day, wow. and I I loved it. And I would I would share pictures with Chris. Well, hey Chris, I tempered dark chocolate. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm doing the um when you're dipping the chocolate. I didn't have an enrober at the time. No, I had a fork. I had a fork, you know, and toothpicks. 
And then um, slowly but surely, he's like, Albert, you're going exponentially fast. I'm like, yes. I just want to do well. I want to be happy. And my goal is that I have employees and then I can spend more time with my partner yeah. and my family. Because I'm, you know, in four years, I'm going to be 50. In the three years, I'm going to be 50. So I want to make sure that, you know, I enjoy my my life outside of chocolates too. Somebody, well. somebody, said, somebody, somebody said to me recently, I there's two things I want to say to you. One was like, one of my favorite phrases is, is and I did a post on this, don't be the guy that can do 10,000 kicks. Be the guy that can do one kick 10,000 times. Yes. That consistency. Um, the other one was, um, you were talking about, um, oh, it's just escaped my mind. I just saw the car drive up, so my, my brain just gone there. Okay. Um, what's next for you? That'll come back to me in a minute. What's, what's next for you then? So set up, what's, 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 what's next? the future? Yeah. So what's next is, um, okay, so uh, uh, there's a very good chance. I, I don't want to, hopefully it's going to happen. I reached out to a morning show. Yeah. So I might be in a morning show. Um, right. So that will get more people for my grand opening here. So it's going to be next, yeah. happening on February 10th. Next big thing is I need to land some regular business clients. Um, hopefully the museum, because then my products are going to be sold at the museum level. So then now, when my stuff is there, that will be more ongoing. I'm able to afford some, hey, we're working three, four days a week, making bonbons from chocolates and whatnot. My ultimate goal is to either find a hotel and or chocolate and a shop, you know, that's able to buy things more on bulk on a regular basis. Right, and, that's um, a physical yeah. shop front. Yes, say again? Physical Correct. shop, chocolate, yeah, okay. There's a, a couple of companies that have reached out to me, but and they want to do private labeling. A part of me feels like I, yeah, I work so hard for this. I think it's good that they, the viewers know who made it, you know, because I put you don't in just, the work. You don't, you don't jump at everything though, do huh? you? You don't, you don't jump at every, like you, you, you know, when people come and ask you, you measure it carefully, yes. don't you? Um, I, I don't say yes to everything. Somebody, somebody recently said to me that um, they've, they've gone from the chef world into chocolate and they said, I don't know if I've got the energy to start again. And I said, uh, you're not starting again. You're starting with a truckload of knowledge. You've got loads of knowledge from industry. So it doesn't necessarily need to be chocolate related. You've got the food industry background. So, same for you. You said, well, you know, you're nearly 50. There's never a right time to start. You've just got to start. Right? <laughs> I just, it's, it's crazy. I, I don't know why for me. Like, we all have, like, our self-expectation of where we should be as specific ages. Yeah, you that, know? but that's what school, that's employee mentality, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes that, that kicks in for me. You know? Employee mentality that you've got to do 45 years in a career and then retire and enjoy your, no. Oh, no. I probably I won't be retiring, you know, honestly. No, I, I just want this to be well, more. <laughs> I'm busier now than I've ever been. I'm enjoying it more now than when I started age 15 and a half, and I'm 53. So I'm having more fun now than when I started, and I've had a, an incredible career in food. I, I've had dream jobs. I've done jobs that most chefs would dream about. I feel, right now, I feel like I'm just getting started. Yeah. And, and that, I love it. And I, right I get to play. I get to play with these. I still get to create chocolate. I still do lots of teaching. Um, I don't know what the future holds. I tell you what. I don't jump at. I get. I get lots and lots of offers of different things. I just don't jump at everything because my time at home with the family is important. And my. Yeah. And if that's if I value that, then also my time at work I value. I just don't jump at everything because I don't think getting famous is a thing. I think it can be. If it happens, that's great. But to me, it's like I, I don't. I just want to make sure there's money in the bank, there's food on the table. Yeah. I'm not stressing out all the yeah. time, and I, I get to go home with my fiance and be, spend some time with my family and my my niece. Oh well, yeah, you went to Disney, niece. Disney, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my friend's on the day at Disney. He's like, uh, I'm with the family. 
she's adorable. She's like, um, one, one morning, my sister gives me a call at 9 a.m. She never calls me early in the morning. Is everything okay, sis? She's like, my daughter wanted me to call you. And she said that, can you please draw Uncle Albert on my backpack? He's my best friend. Wow. I'm like, wow. That's right, <laughs> You know, so oh, it's, it's, it's really touching must, how... She, she must be stoked if you're doing stuff with Disney then, right? She doesn't, she doesn't get it yet. You know, she, she knows I make, I make her fresh ice cream. She knows I make chocolates, but she's, she hasn't obviously gotten the grasp that I'm really a chocolatier. You know, so I, I told myself, I cannot wait when she's old enough. She's like, oh shit, my, it's, my uncle's it's, gonna... Um, it's a really... It's a... <laughs> really interesting it's a really interesting conversation opener when you when people say to you oh, what do you do and you say oh, i'm a chocolatier they're like oh i've never spoken to a chocolatier it's an instant it's like well i'd like to talk but i need to actually go and be a chocolatier <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's your favorite chocolate do you like cabris do you like this do you like and it's just it's a real easy conversation opener and i think when my three girls they're like my my dad makes chocolate i'm like, no i don't make chocolate i make things with chocolate no, I make chocolate and that's it. And, and I make strange colored things in bottles, right? Amazing. I was, I thank you so much, by the way, for the sample. I, I, give me one second. I got your box, uh, your box. I, and I still have to ex explore and check it out. I did open one. So just to smell it. When, when people move home, right, we do housewarming presents, don't you? I think when you've got people that you know and people that you like and people that you admire in business, we should do them business gifts when they open a new business. Because we do that when they move home. Why can't we do that in business? Why can't that just be a nice thing in business that you go, oh, well, what, here's, here's something new for your new place, right? My little housewarming yeah. gift. Thank you for this. You're I, I need to go an unboxing for you because off the bat, when we you open this, it smells like, like, cocoa butter like fresh cocoa butter it, it doesn't smell like paint paint and not to say anything other products yeah. bad i'm not saying i'm not knocking on the other products it's, i think they're awesome but this is different quality amazing um, that's that's this it's organic it's 100 percent criollo cocoa butter. so it's single origin organic um when we started doing this i kind of realized that just needs to be something better on the market so like with everything and I, again i had this conversation with chris harvey and it's like you know if you give chefs like a lot of stuff is made in industry but industry don't use it the producers don't use it they just make it but if you give it to chefs they will get better equipment better quality of, of products mine was like you know if we if we use the best cocoa butter and the best colors can we make the best colored cocoa butter from that okay what does that look like? And there's nothing wrong walking around at work smelling them, okay? It's okay. <laughs> lots, of people, lots of people do that. They don't admit to it, but they're like, oh, I just have a quick smell. Um, there's a guy, Jason, that's up in the Napa Valley. Um, he's always walking around smelling these. He's like, is that wrong? No, you're allowed to... You're allowed to you... I don't want you to glue sniff, but you are cocoa butter sniffing. That's, that's allowed. Um, enjoy those. I'm going to do that was, a, a, a kind of a I'm gonna do a spring with that. I'll, I'll do a little video and and share it with the group. Uh, I, I'm actually really excited to to work with this. Yeah, that's it's... wonderful. What it will make a difference is um, we talk about the chocolate that we use. We talk about the fillings that we use and the sugars and the glucose. That first layer is the bit that they see, and it's the first taste that they get. So the feedback to me, and we've been going two years now. Um, is the difference it's made to people's chocolates. And that was why we did it. Because the first one we tasted, tasted of petrol, like like exhaust fumes, right? Yeah. And that's what started that off. And I, like me with my chef hat on, it's no different to getting a piece of salmon and saying, how can I make this better? How can I make this dish better? Or when we make a caramel, what will make this caramel better? Well, I did the same process with these. Um, I spend my life coloured, <laughs> absolutely coloured in different shades of blue, green, yellow, pink. <laughs> it, it's crazy when I, when I paint sometimes, I, I, I wear a mask because when I'm painting, I'm literally painting for like, 
you know, an hour or two, you know, and I'm breathing that. Before I, I didn't, ah, oh, it should be fine. I felt high. I felt, I was dizzy. And it's my purple. nose was blue and purple yeah. and pink. You, you should you should wear a mask because you just can't inhale that much. Um, I think that there'll the, be the people in your building will say, I can smell your, I can smell chocolate, right? Heck yeah. There'll be people on the street. If, I, if I've got, yeah, I've got covers on the windows. If I open the windows, you can see people walk past go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's only me. When um, people pass by my door, they tell me that. Like, they're, they're really excited to have a, a real chocolatier here, you know, because like, like I, it's funny, I, I went downstairs, I had a few, um, I tried to have 10% or less error rate, error yeah. percentage rate. So yeah. for every thousand of bombas I make, I try to have less than a dozen or two mistakes. Yeah. So uh, yesterday I had, I had eight mistakes, right. which is, uh, which is good. So Happy the neighbors, right? from, <laughs> said again. Happy neighbors. So I give it to, to the management team downstairs. And then one lady, she doesn't talk to me as much, you know. And then when I gave it to her, she like, she became quiet. She closes her eyes. She said, hmm. And then she said it multiple times. I'm like, are, are you okay? And then she said, I know of you. And I know of your products. I've never tasted it. So this is chocolate. This is a bon bon. I'm like, yeah. She's like, wow. And it just made me feel good. I'm like, have yeah, ever, get ready. Have you, ever, have you ever shown them to people and they say, are they edible? Like, can you eat? Why would I give you something you can't eat? Do you want to? And we had one lady that she messaged us saying, I can't get the plastic cover off the chocolate. So I was looking at Randy going, I have no idea what she's talking about. So I've called her. And I said, well, I don't understand when you say the plastic. She went, the shiny layer on the chocolate, I can't. I've got a knife and I'm trying to, it's like, that's not, that's my skills of doing shiny chocolate. That's not plastic. Oh, she thought, oh she yeah, thought I we, get it now, I get it now. She thought we covered each one in, in like saran wrap, right? So it was Correct. like, no, 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 that's my ability to make. I'm that good. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's me because I'm quite good. But that was those ones there. She's like, I can't get the... Friend. And that's fine. My wife, my one wife and I look at each other going... Oh. One time I made a cupcake, right? A chocolate cupcake, but you break it open, there's candy inside. I, I didn't have anybody touch it. I'm like, what's going on? And then one person's like, so is that plastic? I'm like, no, it's chocolate. Like, what? So when I hear that, it's... uh. It's flattering to me, but then that was an error that I made. Like even in my website, I'm thinking that's an amazing product. How come no one's buying it? I'm like, as Albert, they only see the finished product. They don't know what it is. Yeah. They they may think it's plastic. I've heard it three times. Yeah. People don't know real chocolate, and I know you know I know in the U.S. chocolate has mixed. You know, there's the the kind of the whole Hershey's thing and the butyric acid and other things that are in amazing taste, but. It, the European style chocolate, I think, is growing. Um, but still, a lot of people, you know, they only know the the you know the brands here, the Cadbury's, the, the, the they only know that. And it's yes, it is chocolate, but not like we use. Right. But then equally, you know, you talk about chocolate snobbery, and you know, higher chefs that say I only use Valrhona or I only use this. If you went onto the high streets, most of the public they've never heard of Calibo, they've never heard of Valrona, they've never heard of Valiche. So the chocolate snobbery is chefs, isn't it? Um, and I always say this, buy the one that you can afford, and as your volumes go up and you make more money and you get a better reputation, you can get a better product. But you can't go yeah. in with Valrona at the beginning. Yeah, like for example, okay, it's funny that you mentioned that, because like I remember one time, um, I remember, oh, give me one second, I remember one time when I took a class from Melissa, yeah. right? And so I took a class from Melissa and obviously Melissa has money, right? And she, she worked her, herself to an amazing successful level. So she able to afford uh, these things at the time I couldn't afford. And I felt bad for not buying the same equipment as she did. So obviously, because that's, that's my benchmark, right? So if I take her class, this is my benchmark. So anything less than that, I'm thinking, is it even really good? And so 
for example, for example. Um, okay. Um, when I took her class, okay. So here in the States, they have these thermometers called Atkins, right? Yeah. I don't know if they have it in Europe. Yeah. So they're good. You know, this was like $200. I use this maybe three times. I use this all the time. Um, <laughs> I got this is that, from Amazon. Is that some pen thermo work? It's, it's almost like a thermo pen, yeah. correct. Okay. But it, it's accurate. Just don't dip it in water. You're fine. 10, 15 bucks. I'm like, oh my God, all these fancy bowls. I went to the Dollar Tree store and got these, these one, yes, a dollar for five ramekins. It works. If it works, it works. Yeah. Until like, like what you said, you, you, you earn more money or you have a high end customer. Not everyone's gonna have yeah. um, the highest elite chocolate that costs, you know, 10, $15 a pound. If you can afford, you know, something less for now, for now, yeah, not a problem. And then learn that best, the, the highest quality is not always the best. Yeah. Because like, for example, I did this one, what was it? I did this one recipe, it was pricey. I had Sosa um, drops, extract, that yeah. enhance the flavor. You know, I followed the recipe, you know. People, what's okay, people like the Oreo. Chocolate dip Oreo in the ganache. Okay. I'm like... Go, go into a store and have a look at the works. candy that sells, right? Because here we've got Mars bar, Snickers, Kit Kat, like the, the standard stuff. That's what they know chocolate so our job is to duplicate or replicate those kind of flavors peanuts caramel and chocolate work right you put caramel in anything yes. it works if we put hazelnuts with caramel it works you can't it's like these bonbons with three or four layers it's it's is it, is it necessary does it need these drops and all these bits and pieces i think some chefs make very expensive recipes because they're being paid to promote an ingredient. Yes. Do they do it in their, their own business? Probably not, right? When the yes. freebie runs out, when the free sample's gone, probably won't see that chocolate again. Um, I've had I've had very expensive chocolate that's not been great, and I've had cheap chocolate that's been really nice. And I don't, you know, I don't know if I, I don't, head towards one brand with chocolate it, it depends on so many things corporate you know the corporate price structure of them that it's different chocolate um depends what i'm doing it depends what play flavor profile i don't tend to share with an expensive chocolate it's just no it's, point sometimes it's whatever's available because during covid oh yeah gosh yeah one of the things that i learned during covid was this i told my mom and dad it reminds me of being back home in the philippines so where we live in the philippines even though we lived in the capital, we lived in a small se section as a bit of like a village type of a place. Yeah. And so when you go to a store and you find this condensed milk or this type of candy and you only have a hundred of it, I don't want to say a hoard, but you buy whatever you can buy because you don't know when it's going to come back. Yeah. You know, so during COVID, there was a moment where guelph puree was gone for six yeah. months. So I and didn't... Halibut. Say again? Oh, yes. chocolate. Yeah, so then I went from Boiron to Ponthea. I'm more like, I actually like Boiron more, in honesty. But I like the strawberry of Ponthea more than, yeah. than Boiron. There's certain flavors that I like more of Ponthea. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally, totally. And I think you, you know, and, I, and you know, I see it with the same with our brand. There's, there's certain colors that people like, and there's other brands that they like that color, and I don't duplicate that color. Um, and, and nor do we want to. So, but you you have to like with some of the ingredients. I think you have to shop round so that you can get a bit more variety of flavor. Because it's just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's the best. Right. It just might have a very expensive marketing team behind it, right? And I get asked this question, professionals. You know, people, is it okay to use Calibut? Yeah, massive producer. That's what I have massive right producer, <laughs> and you can get hold of it for your inventory quite easily, right? Whereas you might, you know, how many, you know, how many people have bought, you know, Valrona Carib and they bought one bag, done their collection, and then they can't buy any more of it. Yeah, and that's that sucks because suddenly 
you know, you print as many new cards and all the other bits and pieces. So as you scale up, you've got to make those decisions as well. I, you know, can I get Belcolade is a brand that's really nice brand of chocolate Belcolade. For whatever reason in industry, it's just not seen as a premium product, but it is. Uh, yes. Um, and they have the volume to cope, right? One of the things I also like to, to share with the viewers is the fact that, you know, when you are starting your own business and or you already have an ongoing business, uh, in the past, I have been guilty of falling into this peer pressure. Like, obviously, the sales rep will say, oh, my God, you have uh, Calibo. Well, you're that, this higher quality than that. So to, to me, I feel like if a sales rep, or somebody is talking to you and making you feel bad for the equipment or the ingredients that you're using because of what you can only afford at the time. That's not worth for me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not famous. I'm just a hardworking guy. You know, I don't need to work with you because I, I told this gentleman, I'm like, hey, I want to let you know, like, I, I, I got this for a really, 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 really good price and I'm set for a while, you know, so if it's going to help me make money without without compensating flavor, it might not be the most elite, like maybe Valrona or a higher quality, whatever you want to call it, but my, my clients like it, why change it, right? And they still have a lot, and I, I don't like wasting food too. He Absolutely. To work. Absolutely, do you know how many, you know, how many, you know I talk to a lot of businesses, I talk, I talk to a lot of chocolatiers, and you know, I've seen quite a few, unfortunately, closed shop because they were you know it's all valrona and they were in a place where the clients can't afford that like you know in restaurants if your client base can't afford lobster you can't put lobster on the menu because you just throw them in the bin in the trash right so once you've gained that reputation and you can charge that creep yeah you can put on the menu whatever you want but it's it's this growing and, and recognizing where you are you don't nothing wrong with that that's my tempering I have Easy that. temper, melting bowl, and um, I, I work with this brand. I work with Thermapen. Okay. I, they're, they're really, really good to me, but melting tanks, if I've got 2,000 bonbons to use, I know it's going to be mel a melting tank, this, and Easy Temper. That's it. I don't have room for a sell me. Not yet. Not yet, anyway. Um, we'll get there, but it's not. This took up, this, the butter took over everything. Yeah. Right, so you're gonna blow up. I mean, you're blowing up now. Those, it's amazing. I'm, I'm excited to use them. So I am. I'm excited to use them. Do a video. Yeah, do a taste test, spray test, right. everything. Great. <laughs> uh, give, give me a shout. I'm gonna let you go because I think you've probably got a lot of work to I go. Have, and we've done an hour. I have, I have to make a thousand bonbons Albert, today, before the end of it. It's really lovely to, I think, I'm sure, you know, everybody's enjoyed this tonight. I'm going to post this on um, to, so I save this now. Um, and I'll do a repost because I think what happens with these is, why we've had quite a few viewers tonight, people will watch this over the weekend and you can see the views go up and up and yeah. up. So um, I will save this and um, I'll tag you in it so that you can kind of, um, what I might do is do a collaborator so that you can then show it on your page as well. I would like that. I like, like to bring some people um, on your page and, and, and vice versa. Like there's, some lovely, there's some lovely information shared, shared. And I think your, your story is inspiring in that four years ago this started, right? Four years. Four years ago. I, um, I had none of this existed four years ago. Okay. So you can, you can make that jump. It goes very quickly, does it? The thing that I, I want to tell people, um, and I'll leave it with this, I know that our, our chat's coming to an end here, it's like, um, there are gonna be times that you're done. And I've had it, right? Um, think, you're, think of yourself as a pinball machine. You're getting banged around, you're stressed out, but just because you fall into the hole doesn't mean you're done, right? Take time to recall that spring, regain momentum and energy, and let it go, and see how much more points you still score. But be ready to get banged around. Be yeah. ready to make mistakes, and then falling back, and then totally. do it again. Totally. And, and then having that resilience to it, with me, like I, I do a lot of vis vis visualization work. It's kind of funny. I have my own vision board, yeah. where I want to be, where I want to achieve, what I want to attract in my life. And anything that gets in the way of that, 
a swipe left because I have no time. Yeah, you know. Oh, I don't, you know. And I, then I'm too busy for negative. I just I don't have time. I'm too busy. Yeah. And if there's stuff happening that I don't like, I'll stop. I'll go for a hike, clear everything, and then come back. Here. What's ne problems have never been solved by ten people looking at the same problem. Us. Right. It, it didn't know business is tough. Yeah, you get banged around. You good days, bad days. It always ends good. And, and you know what? I will shut everything down and I'll just make chocolate because that's what I love doing. Despite doing all these other things, I still love going in the kitchen and being creative. I think you do the same thing, right? Shut. Uh, last question. Music in the kitchen, yes or no? Say it again. Music in the kitchen, yes or no? Yes. What are you listening to? Actually, I, I listen to several. I listen to Lindsey Sterling. Yeah. Um, I listen <laughs> to... <laughs> You're gonna laugh. The Greatest Showman. Yeah. <laughs> no. I listened to. Um, I was listening to ABBA this morning. <laughs> in the eighties. <80s. laughs> I, I went from ABBA to Led Zeppelin to the Beatles, a little bit of Elvis, and then Green Day. Love it. Right. I, I, so it's, not, it's another one that I I like motivational uh, songs. I like like um, underdog type of deal and feel like you're rising. Yeah. Like, um, almost kind of like a, uh, I think, I think, you know what, when it's like, if I put on Metallica, I'll speed up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Or I, I could be playing, you know, I like, um, I like violin. I like string instruments. So concertos or, or for, you know, quartets, um, I'll put that, but that, that's normally when I'm just piping individual shells, right? If I'm, if I'm piping and filling and Metallica's on, there's shit everywhere, right? Okay, okay. one song, like, it's crazy, that I listen to and it makes me act like a drone. I, I yeah. had one employee, she, she laughed at me. We're friends right now. Uh, her name is Connie and she said, oh my gosh, and then she met my partner. She said, oh my God, when I used to work for Albert, for five hours straight, Albert will play his single Desert Rose oh, by Sting. <laughs> <laughs> it's on a loop because it's like you're like a drone, you know. You should so maybe hypnotic. I, I used to say, I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to leave you this last song. I've run big kitchens, really, really big kitchens, and in in a huge, like you know, places like 120 chefs. And I'm exec. What I used to do is I used to find the shittest because the music was in my office and I controlled it. So I'd find the worst song that I could find. I'd put it on and then lock the door and go to a meeting. And I'd come back with the chef. Right? <laughs> Desert Rose was one of them. Um, no, it's a good choice. Listen, it is really, I, you need to get back to work because I'm sure you've got absolutely no worries. Fun to play. Um, it's really lovely to see you. Um, I will post this on to, to YouTube and the other things and I'll tag you in all the bits. But um, truly, thank you for your time today. I know you're a busy man. Yeah, thank you so much again for taking the time and seeing my, my beautiful new home or so in my kitchen. And we'll we'll stay in touch, and I, I know that we'll probably have another uh, meeting again. Yeah, I'm soon. sure. Um, I'll, I'm, I'm going to fly out and see. I've got a few people to see in America shortly, so yeah, I think we need to plan a trip. When I'll you come to, the come to right. LA, please yeah. let me know. I would love to have you as a guest here. We could have another show. Uh, spoiler we'll get, alert. Um, we'll get Chris over. That will be awesome. It, 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 I, come on. It, it's, Oh, he's busy fruit picking, though, isn't he? That's all he seems to be doing. He's, the he's busy. He's a busy man. But one thing is happening this year. Uh, Luis Amado yes. and I will be doing a master's class together. Yes, you are. Once we finalize all the details, I'll do a huge announcement. Okay. And it's going to be awesome. Happy days. Mm -hmm. Good luck okay. with that. Um, good luck with the opening. Um, keep posting. Keep being you. Keep being positive. Thank you for everything you're sharing. Um, You've inspired lots of people, all right? And I think um, you're a definite. As soon as I as soon as I can get you a Chalky Chat Crew sticker, I will. All right. I will love that. One of the team. All right. Take care. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye, everybody.